never forgotten. We read those words on the Columbine Memorial. There's the ring of remembrance, a tribute to each life lost, and the wall of healing for each life changed. And at the very center of the memorial is that ribbon with that promise, never forgotten. It's a promise being tested today as a Columbine survivor sits homeless and alone, still fighting the medical issues that started the day that Richard Castaldo was shot. His story spread quickly through the Columbine community and got to our Steve Steger. 20 years ago, cameras followed Richard Castaldo a lot. They told the recovery story of a high school junior shot while eating lunch outside with a friend, paralyzed. 13 years later, in Los Angeles, a reporter told of a school shooting survivor about to lose his home when the bubble burst. It's nerve wracking for sure. The cameras weren't there when he was evicted, living without a home. There's no benefits for these people. You Holly Dexter you. met Castaldo last year through their advocacy. It was at a gun violence prevention rally. She noticed something was wrong. And I went to hug him and I noticed how hot he was to the touch. He went to the hospital. He was in intensive care for weeks. He um, was very sick with a MRSA infection. Now she says Castaldo is in a convalescent nursing home. He's been there for five months and they can't release him because he's homeless. Dexter is working with a group of other advocates to get him help, but they're stuck, afraid donations will make him ineligible for his government health care. He doesn't need things right now. He needs a place to live so he can be released. Dexter posted on Facebook this weekend, and the post has gone viral. She's getting a ton of messages from the Columbine community offering to help, and she is hoping his story might change the way we think about survivors of gun violence. I just see that picture of him as a 17-year-old kid with braces, and I just think, how did we fail him? You know, here he is 20 years later, and we we failed him as a society. The former principal of Columbine, Frank DeAngelis, tells me he is trying to get in touch with Richard now to try to figure out the best way to get help to him. We tried to reach out to Richard today. He never returned our phone call. I've heard from a few survivors who are concerned about him. So Holly has set up an email address for anyone who might have some way to help Richard out. It is a home for Richard at gmail.com. And Kyle, we will put that under this story on 9news.com. If you want to get in touch, it's an odd situation where they're asking for a suggestion. Not, not a donation. Not money. Not no, money. They, they don't want a donation. They're worried that donation could actually set him over the limit for his government health care. Mm -hmm. And so they're asking for maybe a housing suggestion. Maybe you know someone in L.A. who can help him out. Yeah, so we're just kind of putting this out there with the idea that somebody's got a connection, somebody knows the system, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who might be able to help him out because it's a really critical point right and now. And if you do, if you're watching this right now, mm -hmm. the, that email address, we'll put it up on 9news.com after the show, but it's a home for Richard at gmail.com. All right, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it.